Can you take BPC-157 and semaglutide together? Well, it's a great question. And semaglutide, for those of you who don't know, it's a GLP-1 agonist. It is also known as Ozembic, very popular peptide. And it's one of the peptides that has the criticism of causing muscle loss and muscle atrophy. And so in this video, what I'm going to do is show you exactly how you can use BPC-157 with semaglutide or semaglutide, however you want to say it. You can use these together and you're going to get a doubling of benefits when it comes to muscle preservation and also when it comes to digestive protection. So I'm Reagan Archibald. I love helping people optimize their health. I want to help you get to that optimized state, the place where you want to go in your health. It doesn't matter what I want for your health. What it matters is maybe you're looking for body composition and especially if you're considering using uh, semaglutide. And then I also know that you have some muscle preservation goals. So you really want to protect your body composition from a physical fitness perspective. And that's the beautiful thing of these two molecules is I found that when they're used appropriately, it gives you this unreasonable leverage where you can actually accomplish the goals when it comes to body composition faster than anything we've seen. And semaglutide, for the record, because it's a GLP-1 agonist, it's very strong compared to like a second generation or third generation GLP-1. Like terzepatide is, it has about a five times lower pulse on the GLP-1 pathway. So you won't have quite the same side effect profile as what we've seen. The semaglutide is a phenomenal peptide, but it does seem to trigger nausea. It has a little greater effect on stabilizing the stomach. So you have a lowering of gastric motility, meaning your food doesn't move through as quickly. And that can cause some problems. I mean, imagine if you're not breaking down proteins and ideally you'd be eating about a gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight when you're looking for body composition changes. But that semaglutide, it stops the digestion and breakdown of it. And so these proteins, they start to ferment and putrefy. And so it can cause these infections in your gut. So you want to make sure that you're taking enzymes and you're doing detoxification protocols because if you're not removing waste from your body effectively, and especially if you get constipated on these, that's gonna cause a big problem. And this is where that yo-yo effect comes in. It's also where you see people what's known as the ozembic face, where they look kind of like zombies. And it does concern me because of the fact that they're not looking at the body holistically. It's like, all we need to do is look at the mechanism of peptides. These peptides are beautiful molecules. They're just little protein structures that exist in, their, in your body. They don't force your body to go down a certain metabolic pathway. All they're doing is they're saturating these genes and the semaglutide is one of these peptides that has a much longer half-life. So the uh, effective concentration 50 or the half-life of semaglutide is about 150 hours, 140 to 150 hours. That's roughly a week. So that's why you're taking weekly doses of this. And so the side effects, usually it takes three, maybe four days before some of that nausea goes away if you've taken the prescriptive dose. So this is where starting on a smaller dose and then gradually tapering it up as you need to is really important on this. But the GLP-1s, if you do it right, it's protective for the brain, it's protective for the heart, protective for the kidneys. It seems to be very powerful from a longevity perspective, like all the hallmarks of aging, inflammation, for example, those seem to be protected. And if you can get the nutrient sensing and the loss of proteostasis, one of the hallmarks of aging, if you can solve that problem, then you really have a blockbuster peptide here. But if you don't add BPC-157 with the semaglutide, one thing you're doing is you're not going to be able to protect the gut lining because one thing BPC-157 does is it helps seal up the gut barriers. BPC-157, it activates this molecule called VEGF and VEGF it protects the endothelial cells. And this endothelium, as your gut starts to get infectious, that starts to break down. And that's where you can start having these kind of food reactions or you can get nauseated doesn't end well. But the terzepatides seem to solve some of that problem. And even in the clinical studies, what you'll find with semaglutide 
is it was able to stabilize blood sugar and that was the first indication it was approved for, but it also got approval for obesity. Now when trazepatide came, which is a dual agonist, so it's a GLP-1 and a GIP, they found that with a lower pulse on the GLP and a little bit greater on the GIP, they found that there was fewer side effects and it actually, people lost more weight over the course of a year than they did on semaglutide and they had an even greater lowering of hemoglobin A1C. Now the triple agonist, and this is one that I'm very excited about, retitrutide. This one I've been taking for about two years, and retitrutide is a triple agonist. So it's a GLP-1, it's a GIP, and it's got eight times more GIP than trazepatide does. And then it's got about five times less GLP-1 than trazepatide does. But then it also has this secret weapon called glucagon. Now glucagon is made in the liver and glucagon is a performance enhancement. It helps you retain muscle mass, very powerful peptide, but it also causes more sugar release from the liver, a little more gluconeogenesis. But when you combine it with a GLP-1, it stabilizes the blood sugar better than almost anything. And so this would be kind of the sweet spot that we like to use is more on the retitrutide side, just because of the nature of its mechanism of action. Peptides do seem to work better when you stack them in the right combination. Just like BPC, it's the master key. You know, if you have an apartment building and you own it, you're gonna have one key, you can get into anything you need to get into in that apartment. And so that's what BPC-157 does. So it activates all the regenerative properties in your body, but it protects you so that you don't lose muscle mass. One of the things BPC-157 does is it activates growth hormone receptors. So now you're getting this growth hormone receptor activation and that allows you to recover more, build muscle, store muscle, but then you also recover from your workout. So you want to get back in the gym the next day instead of feeling so sore that you're like, I don't want to work out ever again in my life. These seem to be a really powerful combination. So in summary, if you're using uh, semaglutide, use it safely. Make sure that you're using peptides that are, are from license 503A, 503B compounding pharmacies so that you have the absolute purity that's necessary. So many people are buying research use only peptides and that really puts your body at risk. You don't know if you're getting the full analog of these peptides. When you combine, if you are using like Ozembic or semaglutide, you want to make sure that you're dosing it properly so you're not overdoing that receptor saturation or the concentration of the peptide on those molecules. And then when you add in the BPC-157, you're safeguarding yourself in many different ways against the gut issues that can occur from not just the GLP-1, but also when you're losing weight, the fat cells hold a lot of toxicity. And so now your body's got to clear that out too. But BPC helps protect the digestive system, which is the elimination. That's a big part of the overall cleansing. And then it also helps preserve muscle mass. So I'm Reagan Archibald. If you love this video, I've got another video on how often can you take BPC-157. We'll provide a link in the show notes. I'll see you on the next video.